everyone! Today I'm going to talk to you about sexual assault. Sexual assault can happen anywhere at any time. Every two minutes an American is sexually assaulted. There are 237,868 cases of sexual assault each year. 30% of rapists are either a friend or an acquaintance of their victim. There are about 60 cases of sexual assault that go unreported and 80% of victims are under the age of 30. The FBI National Center of Analysts for Violent Crime came up with a typology for a different kind of rapist in which the offender can be classified into five different categories. The first type is power reassurance. This type of offender behavior suggests an underlying lack of inadequacy, incompetence, and a misguided belief that sex is consensual expressed through minimal force and low confidence. This type of offender does not want to hurt their victim. The second type is power assertive. This type of offender behavior suggests an underlying lack of inadequacy and confidence expressed through a need of control, mastery, and humiliation of the victim while demonstrating authority. This offender has no fantasies of victim consent. He seeks to dominate the victim completely. The third type is anger retaliatory. The offender behavior suggests a great deal of displaced rage or violence toward a specific person, group, institution, symbol, or either. This offender is punishing the victim for real or perceived wrongs he has suffered early in life. He is taking revenge on his victim who is symbolic to those who have hurt him in the past. In this sense, his anger toward women is displaced onto the victim. Number four, anger excitation, aka sadistic. This type of offender behavior implies that the offender gets sexual gratification or excitement from inflicting pain and suffering on the victim. The attack often involves torture. The last category is opportunistic. This type of offender behavior suggests an offender who is out to satisfy immediate sexual impulses, often while committing another crime. The offender's primary motivation in this case is sexual in nature rather than anger or desire of power. There is also the sexually driven stalker who pursues women to have sex with them, sometimes consensual, sometimes forced. Sexual assault is also a big issue on college campuses. As we all know, about a month ago here on CSU's campus, we got an email alert about a student that was sexually assaulted when she was on campus. Pretty much what happened is that the girl was walking and a man came up from behind and grabbed her butt. And what was very disappointing and disturbing, to me at least, was seeing other women screen grabbing the email alert and posting it on various social media sites, laughing it off and applauding the woman for having a great ass. Touching someone inappropriately and against their will is never funny, so I am not sure what was going on with everyone making a laughing sock out of this case and this is why we have so many issues with sexual assault. There needs to be more education and then stuff like that may prevent future victims from reporting their cases. Another story that I have to tell really fast is a former roommate of mine was a victim of sexual assault. She basically came home the next morning and told me that she thinks she was raped. After she explained the situation to me, I told her that she was taken advantage of, she was sexually assaulted. Basically what happened is that she was at a frat party the night before and she believed she was drugged and she woke up with a man on top of her having intercourse with her against her will and against her knowledge. Basically I tried to talk my roommate into reporting the case as she knew who the offender was but unfortunately she did not report the case because she was in a sorority and she was friends with the whole sorority was friends with the fraternity and she didn't want to give the frat a bad rep or get her friends in trouble. So this is another downside of sexual assault where the victim is thinking of the offender and the consequences of the offender where the victim should be thinking of the consequences for themselves and how this could affect other women. The University of Buffalo recently did a study where they found that college women that were past victims of sexual assault are actually at greater risk for future sexual assault. RIA researchers followed nearly a thousand college women, most ages 18 to 21, over a five-year period studying their drinking habits and experiences of severe physical and sexual assault. Severe physical victimization includes assaults with or without a weapon. Severe sexual victimization includes rape and attempted rape included incapacitated rape where victim is too intoxicated from drugs or alcohol to provide consent. 
Initially, they were attempting to see if victimization increased drinking and if drinking then increased future risk. Instead, they found that the biggest predictor of future victimization is not drinking, but past victimization. Hopefully, in the future, there will be more awareness and education with sexual assault to try to prevent more cases from happening. This is not something that should be such a common occurrence. If you are interested, there are links down below for different information, and I... Hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.